Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review Podcast. Today's topic is going to be differentiating aortic aneurysms from aortic dissections. Keep in mind that aortic aneurysms has two types. It can be true or false. True aneurysms involve all three layers, whereas a false aortic aneurysm is located mainly in the adventitia. Also, the location is important. The typical aortic aneurysm is either abdominal or it can be thoracic. So you can have a TAA or an abdominal aortic aneurysm, a AAA. Now, the risk factors for developing aneurysms will include things such as hypertension, atherosclerosis, patients who have connective tissue disease like Marfan's Ehlers-Danlos, or congenital disorders like Turner's, patients who have Takayasu's arteritis, patients who present with syphilis. All these are major risk factors for thoracic aortic aneurysms. Now for abdominal aortic aneurysms, the most common risk factor you want to remember is atherosclerosis, smoking, and hypertension. So knowing that abdominal aortic aneurysms do not have some of the connective tissue diseases, as well as aortitis from Takayasu's and syphilis, all those can help you differentiate between a thoracic or an aortic aneurysm that's in the abdomen. Also, patients will have a common complaint for abdominal aortic aneurysms of a pulsatile abdominal mass that will be seen in all patients. Typically, these patients are over 60 years of age. And when you order the characteristic study, such as the ultrasound, then that's mainly used for a screening and surveillance test of choice for the abdominal aortic aneurysms. But the most important quick and non-invasive test with relatively good specificity and sensitivity is going to be the contrast CT. MRIs are preferred for aortic root imaging for thoracic aneurysms and the transesophageal echo may be useful for thoracic aneurysms in some cases. So on the board exam, go with contrast CT as your number one choice and if patients have a abdominal aortic aneurysm, then sometimes ultrasound can be used as the screening and surveillance test of choice. Now, in terms of treating aortic aneurysms, the key lies in actually modifying the risk factors such as smoking cessation, decreasing cholesterol, giving patients beta blockers to decrease aneurysmal growth, also ACE inhibitors, and In addition, surgery when the abdominal aortic aneurysms are greater than 5.5 centimeters or when the thoracic aneurysms are growing at 1 centimeter or more every year. And in patients who have Marfan's, the criteria for surgery is usually when patients have an aneurysm that reaches 4.5 centimeters or more. Patients can also benefit from endovascular repair, but this is reserved for high-risk cases. And complications will include pain, rupture, patients can have an aortic dissection, which we'll be talking about shortly, thromboembolic events, and so really there's going to be several complications you want to look into. So that was an overview of aortic aneurysms. The key signs are going to be history of atherosclerosis, smoking, hypertension, along with a pulsatile abdominal mass. That's the key here. And patients who have any sort of a connective tissue disease like Marfan, Seeler, Danlos, Takayasu's, syphilis, all these are key things you want to look for when trying to diagnose aortic aneurysms. The diagnosis will most likely be choosing a contrast CT, but in abdominal aortic aneurysms, the ultrasound is beneficial for screening. And the treatment is choice is going to be risk modification, such as smoking cessation and decrease in cholesterol, 
along with uh, hypertension control with beta blockers and ACE inhibitors and surgery if the aneurysm great is greater than 5.5 centimeters or it's growing more than a centimeter per year. And the, main, and the common complications you want to keep in mind are going to be those of pain, rupture, and aortic dissection. Now let's talk about an aortic dissection. An aortic dissection is different from an aortic aneurysm because here you have an intimal tear that causes extravasation of blood into and along the aortic media. And as a result, it can be also caused by vasovasorum rupture. And in some cases, you can have ulceration of plaques from penetrating intima, which can lead to hemorrhage. The most common risk factor here is going to be hypertension whereas the most common risk factor in aortic aneurysm was atherosclerosis. Even here you have Marfans with fibrillin 1 gene defects, Ehlers-Danlos with type uh, 3 procollagen defects, and patients who have adult polycystic kidney disease, as well as conditions such as Takayasu's giant cell and Biquet's and syphilis. Another key association with aortic dissection is pregnancy, especially in the third trimester, and trauma such as um, any cardiac aortic surgery or cardiac catheterization. So what are the key clinical manifestations of a aortic dissection? Well, the most important is going to be pain radiating to the back. That's a key sign. It's often abrupt, severe, and it's tearing in nature. Patients have syncope, Patients can have hypertension. Patients will have a murmur of aortic insufficiency and syncope as well as uh, recent CVA events are all common clinical manifestations. The CT is a quick non-invasive test and keep in mind that the patients who receive a CT and you find an unconclusive result may benefit from an MRI which has a sensitivity and specificity of greater than 98 percent. The treatment here is going to be making sure you control the blood pressure. So IV beta blockers like propranolol or esmolol is key. Then also giving patients IV vasodilators like nitroprusside. So these two in combination are the key medications. Complications will improve rupture. Um, patients can have coronary events leading to a myocardial infarction. And sometimes patients would develop aortic insufficiency because of the annular dilation or disruption, leading to displacement of the leaflet because of the false lumen. So, in review, aortic dissections will have hypertension, a tearing severe persistent pain radiating to the back, along with syncope, aortic insufficiency, and pulse defects, and associations with Marfan's, Ehlers-Danlos, Turner's, Takayasu's, pregnancy in the third trimester, or recent trauma. To diagnose CT is still the test of choice and for treatment you would go with IV beta blockers. In aortic aneurysm the key treatment first was risk modification. Aortic dissections are more serious. You need to give the patient IV beta blockers to control their blood pressure right away and then IV vasodilators like niso, niso, nitroprusside. Finally, the complications can involve rupture and often obstruction of a uh, branched artery which can possibly lead to a, a MI or sometimes can cause CVAs, Horner syndromes, ischemia in the upper extremity and aortic insufficiency. That was a board review for the Comlex and USMLE board exam, please visit comlexflashcards.com at www.comlexflashcards.com and good luck in your preparation for the board exam.